and it was floating in the air that you could breathe it in. Now, could we survive in an atmosphere like that? No. Absolutely yeah. not. Um, our atmosphere contained vaporized gaseous rock. As the Earth cooled, though, something new formed on the Earth's surface, liquid water. Today, we have an estimated, write this down, we're going to underline this, we have an estimated 366 trillion gallons of water on the planet. Wow. Trillion gallons of water. That's a lot. That's a lot. What has remained an ongoing uh, question for investigation is, where did this water come from? The Earth formed close to the Sun, but Mercury, Venus, and Mars also did. Now, Venus, Mercury, and Mars are low on water. The Earth should be as well. We, though, are in what? What's considered, like, where's Earth? The safe zone. Yeah, we call that the Goldilocks, Goldilocks zone. zone. So let's go ahead and write Goldilocks. I think that I spelled that wrong. Goldilocks oh. zone. It's the Goldilocks zone. Anybody know the story of the three bears? Yeah. <laughs> this porridge is just right. It's not, not too hot. Not it's not too, too cold. So this is the Goldilocks it. zone. Goldilocks means it's not too far. It's not too close. It's just in the right area for water to form and also life to form. Reese, I am so sorry you had a question. Um, how much water do you think we could use a year? I don't know. I think that your footprint for fresh water would probably be different than other people in here, but I bet because we're all Americans, it's a similar footprint. Mm. But I definitely know that our footprint is probably much higher than other countries around the world. Yes? Yeah, I know the answer, but it's about 300 gallons. Mm -hmm. 300 gallons a oh, day. Oh, a day. Okay, oh, I was like, there's no wow. way. 300, 300 gallons per, per a family. day. Per family. A day? Day. Well, you think about the toilets we flush, you think about, right, the showers. How long of a shower do some of you take? Oh, I'm going to look at you now because you have that on your face. How long is your shower? That's what I think about. Mercy wrinkling after that. And then we are running out of water. Thank you very much. That's a lot. 20 minute shower is a long time. 50. Like a five minute shower, you get in there. Five minutes is crazy. That is not. Five minutes is crazy. That's too much. I mean, too much. Oh my goodness. I'm literally up in the shower. All right, wrap it up. We are going to go ahead. I have seen people that like they have little wine glass holders and stuff you put in your shower, and it's like that's stupid. Nobody needs to drink wine in the shower. That's Maybe in the bathtub. Okay, but not in the shower. All right. We're going to go ahead and watch a video. <laughs> Mrs. McGrain is going to watch this. The first question that we're looking uh, for is how yeah. much of uh, Earth's water, excuse me, how much of Earth is covered by water, and then how much of our body is covered up by water. Seven. No, makes up our water. Nope, makes up 66. our body. Thank you. I was going to get it. It just sometimes takes me a while. So we're going to go ahead and find this video, which I know I have very close. I know it's here. I know it's here. I know it's here. Yeah, it's not here. <sighs> It's gonna be great. I know that I have it. I just unfortunately closed it. There it is. It's right here. Let's do it. All right, you mind if I shut down the lights a little bit? Pay attention, please. This is how and where our water is. It's a TED Talk. It has no taste, color, or smell, and we often look right through it. It covers over 70% of the Earth, Ooh. cycling from the... That's question one. How much of the Earth? 70. 70%. 70%. Write that down. Okay. The oceans and rivers to the clouds and back again. It even makes up about 60% of our bodies. How much? 60%. One, six zero. With all this water around and inside us, it's easy to take its presence for granted. But in the rest of the solar system, liquid water is almost impossible to find. So circle the so word false. So how did our planet end up with so Where? much of this substance? Number three, and the question was, God, dude. true or oh, false, no. liquid water is a common thing to find in our solar system. I said true, but I was wrong. It's actually false. The uh, liquid water, liquid water, and I got myself you know, a bit on that one. Liquid water is a rare thing in our solar system. Oh. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to look to find where did it come from. I will be writing down notes. You have to pay attention, please. And here we go. As you probably know, a water molecule consists of two basic parts. Hydrogen, the simplest of all elements, has been around since close to the beginning of our universe. Oxygen entered the scene several hundred million years later. Okay, so let's look at number four. What two elements are found in water? Hydrogen. There you go. So we've got hydrogen, and this is the chemical symbol. Let's go ahead and write that down. We have oxygen. This is the chemical symbol. Let's write that down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a molecule. Now remember, a molecule is different than an atom. Molecules are made up of atoms. These are atoms. We put them together and we form a molecule. Mm. So this is the molecule of oh, water. Are we good? You got a picture in there? Let's sketch oh. a picture of their mm -hmm. arrangement mm -hmm. in the space yes. below. Mm -hmm. All right, now of these two elements, let's look at number five, which originated means which was created first. Hydrogen. That's right. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is one of the first two elements. So that is question five. This was four, Uranium. this is five. Question five says hydrogen. Hydrogen was created first. Now number six is saying, okay, how were the heavier elements such as oxygen created? We're gonna talk about that next and then we'll write something down. Oh, look at you all with After your background stars began information. To form. The massive pressure at the center of these fiery infernos was so great that hydrogen atoms fused together to form helium. Helium, in turn, fused to form heavier elements like beryllium, carbon, and oxygen All right. in a process. So we're gonna go ahead and pause right there. Yeah. And number six, how were heavier elements uh, such as oxygen created? And what did you say? Nuclear. What was? Tell me what was Helium happening. fused together. Okay, so let's say the atoms, mm. atoms fused together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can we say in stars? <laughs> okay, so atoms fuse together in stars. <clears throat> Excuse me, stars. Now, do you see question seven below that? Question seven below that has a word uh, that says nucleosynthesis. Do you see it? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Because you've got words, 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 and then it says nuclear synthesis, and it's in quotations, and then it's like words, 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 words. Word, yes? Word, word, yeah. So what I want you to do is put a arrow from the word fused down to nuclear synthesis so that we can make that connection in our heads. And then this is asking us, let's look at that word nucleo, excuse me, nucleo, not nuclear, nucleo synthesis. Let's talk about what they mean, because that's what question seven is asking us. So nucleo refers to what? The nucleus. Us. Okay. So it's referring to nucleus. Synthesis. What does it mean when we synthesize something? Create it. You create it. So what this means is we are creating, like photosynthesis. Yep. You are creating Photo something thing. from light. Photo is light. Okay? So this, we're creating something from what? Light. Nucleus. No, nucleus. Right, nucleuses. What are the nucleuses? Um, atoms? Hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen atoms, right? Or different atoms. Yep. So what this means is, let's write this down. Uh, creating, which is the synthesis part, new nucleus from oh. existing. Do you know what existing means? Yeah. Existing. Uh -oh. Nucleus or nuclei, nucleuses, nucleus, sis. Nuclei. Uh, nuclei. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're creating new nucleus from existing nuclei. Remember when we had marshmallows? Yeah. And I was like, take that marshmallow and smash it in your hand. And now we have a bigger nucleus, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. That's kind of what um, we're doing here. Synthesize, we're putting something together, creating something out of um, something else. Good? Yep. Great. That was number seven. Known as nucleosynthesis. Turn the powder 
When stars eventually collapsed and exploded into supernovas, these new elements were spread across the universe and combined into new compounds, like the now familiar H2O. These water molecules were present in the dusty okay, cloud that ask. formed our soul. Who remembers what the big dusty clouds were called? Oh, uh, nuclear. Uh, no. Nebula. Begins with an M. Nebula. Nebula, Nebula. 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 clouds. I said it first. Yes. Yes. Said that Rookie of the year. Nebula. Nebula. I do it for my mom. I do it for my After its formation. <laughs> but there's a big question that we don't have the answer to. How much water arrived on Earth? And when? If, as one theory goes, relatively small amounts of water were present on Earth when the rock formed, the high temperatures and lack of any surrounding atmosphere would have caused it to evaporate back into space. Okay, that's question water A. Water would have been unable to remove. Let's go ahead and see question A. It says, early on the Earth's formation, Earth had high temperatures and lacked an atmosphere. What would have happened to any small amount of water? It would have evaporated. Number eight. It... Would have evaporated. Now, this is a word on our TOC. Get your TOC and flip it over and look at the. I don't know why I'm talking that way. Look at the uh, vocabulary. We got evaporation on there. What could we say is the definition for evaporation? Turn the liquid into a gas. Okay. Yes. So it is. Can we say it's a process? Yes. So let's write down for the vocab, it's a process. So a process, remember processes in our uh, rock cycle where all the arrows, it's a process that changes, what'd you say, Tony? Uh, liquid into a gas. Liquid, I appreciate you didn't say water, but it's any liquid into a gas. Now, this right here, that's the process. So I'm going to write evapo. Wish it could. Evaporation. So it's the process. It's not the what we start with. It's not the outcome. It's what gives us the outcome. Are we good? Yes. Yes, we are. Evapo. All right. At this point, flip over your paper, please, and let's go ahead and look at the back. Reese, am I still recording? Yes, ma'am. Fabulous. Thank you very much. God, are we recording? So glad we have some years later when our first atmosphere formed <laughs> through a process called outgassing. Pause, pause, pause. This occurred when... Outgassing. Nine. What process no. led to the formation of our atmosphere? Outgassing. It's a process called outgassing. This oh, is number a nine. I thought it was a bug. It's a problem. <laughs> Does this brown show up very well yeah. in yeah. the back? Karen, is this good or should I put it in? Uh, I should use something darker. Trust okay. me, it's good. Well, I don't believe you, and I will use something darker from now on. <laughs> All right. Outgassing. Now, we're going to learn what outgassing is because it says explain the process in detail. Mm. We can kind of see the process happening right now. You can kind of say it's gross, but it's like the earth is farting <coughs> out a bunch of like gases. So let's go ahead and watch that. This occurred when molten rock in the Earth's core released volcanic gases to the surface, creating a layer that could then trap escaping water. All right, so outgassing is just that, gassing coming out. So this is when <laughs> melted, you can say molted, I'm going to say melted rock. Um, what did they say? Molten uh, rock. Molten rock. Volcanic gases, something like that. Volcanic rock inside the earth uh, put out volcanic, because it was the volcanoes that let it out, volcanic gases um, into the atmosphere. Now, this trapped, I'm going to put an arrow here, trapped, trapped water. So now that we have this atmosphere, right, we're able to go ahead and trap the water molecules. <laughs> outgassing. I love earth science because when you really look at it, it's like, what's outgassing? Well, you can kind of just figure it out. Go. Uh, can I use the uh, bathroom? bathroom? Yeah. Got to do some outgassing. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was stupid humor. You didn't say no, though. I blame my father on that one. That's his fault. You didn't say no. There's a lot of pull your fingers in my class, or pull my pull my pull his finger in my house. So how then did water get back to the planet? Scientists have long suspected that much of it was brought by. Okay, so now we're looking at number ten. Explain the two theories that explain how the Earth got its water. We're gonna watch something and then we'll write something down. Ice-bearing comets or more likely, asteroids that bombarded the Earth over millions of years. Okay, so one theory, the first theory that they yep. are thinking about, let's see if this one is working. Oh, this is the good one that I like. So theory number one, this is nine. Theory number one is after the Earth was formed. After you mean ten? Earth you mean ten? formed. Is this ten? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So theory one in ten is after the Earth formed, comma, comets and asteroids brought water to the planet. How do we figure out that we needed water? So after Earth formed, comets and asteroids brought water to the planet. Comets are like huge, gigantic, dirty ice balls. Like if it was snowing and you went into the parking lot and scooped up a bunch of snow and packed it tight, you'd have like bits of rock and dirt and dust and bits of metal. That is like a comet, except it's like the state of, I don't know, Rhode Island. It's huge, right? Big, huge, giant uh, balls of ice. So that's a comet. Uh, asteroids are just like big rocks. Right, big rocks that are floating around, slamming into the earth apparent, uh, every once in a while. So that's the first idea, that the earth was formed and the water came in after that. Are we good on that one? Mm -hmm. Good. Recent research has challenged this theory. In examining carbonaceous chondrite meteorites that formed shortly after the birth so these, of our solar system, right scientists when our have found earth was formed, that not only did they contain water, water but their inside. mineral chemical composition matched rocks on Earth and samples from an asteroid that formed at the same time as our planet. This suggests that the Earth may have accumulated a substantial amount of water early on that was able to stay put. To okay, so the second theory is that during, during planet formation, so not formation, so it's not like after the Earth was created, it was during the uh, creation of the Earth. Um, water, during planet formation, water was already in the rocks. Already in the rocks. And so the water literally came out of the rocks. It wasn't brought in from out, outside the planet. The rocks were just, the water was just in the rocks that, do you remember accretion? Like you've got the star in the middle and then you've got the swirling gas cloud around smashing bits of stuff in and making bigger and bigger planets. They say that those little pieces of rock already had most of the 366 trillion gallons of water trapped inside the rock. And that as time went on without gassing, you know, we just got more and more of that liquid water that came out of those rocks. So that's the second theory. You know, just Despite in case it's the all lack easy. of an atmosphere, though asteroids may have brought more over the eons. If this turns out to be true, life may have formed much earlier than previously thought. So we do not yet definitively know whether the water on Earth came from its initial formation, later impacts, or some combination of the two. Regardless, the water that runs from our showers, drinking fountains, and faucets is something that didn't just come from a nearby lake or river, but first underwent a cosmic and chaotic journey to get here. That's crazy. Like, we're drinking water that has been around, I mean, the atoms have been around for 13 billion years, right? And this water has been on our planet for four billion years, you know, potentially. That's crazy. And it's good. Like, how many of you like water? Water's good. Yeah, you don't really like water. Yeah. Water is good. Like, there's nothing. Can someone, is someone knocking on the door, Ethan? Can you hear that? Is someone knocking? No. no. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead and read this last paragraph. Interesting 
oh, there's something I want you to underline on that. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go back to here. Back, 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 back. All right. Interestingly enough, it is estimated that Earth's rocks hold 18 times. We're going to underline that. Earth's rocks hold 18 times the amount of water that our, our oceans have. So even though we've got trillions of gallons of water on our planet, there's 18 times more still trapped in our rocks, in uh, the mantle. If we want to understand our liquid water and what it looked like 4.4 billion years ago, we actually have to look at the water that's contained within our rocks. When Earth's magma oceans cool to form a seal of hard rock called the crust, not all of the water in the magma escaped into the atmosphere. A lot of it was trapped below the surface in a layer of Earth known as the mantle. Over time, pieces of the mantle have been shoved to the surface through plate tectonics, and scientists have been able to analyze and research the origin of water on Earth. Needless to say, it's complicated, right? So what we're going to do now, how much time do I have? Probably it was five minutes, actually. That took way longer than that should have taken. So what we're going to do is try to fly through this part right here. Well, it's probably the you are going, it was, I think it was, yeah, just getting the, the paper and everything ready. Yeah, okay, so take better. one and pass it down, please. Oh, we yeah. are going to learn about, just... we're not going to get through all of it, but I do want to kind of get more. started on the property of water, looking at water molecules. <laughs> today, don't forget, if anybody needs to come to Liberty Time today, you can. On our table of contents, our T-O-C, this is going to go on your second line. Please write down properties of water on your second line of your table of contents. All right, now, I've got a word here that says polar. Water is a polar table. molecule. Can someone please tell me where have you heard that word polar before? Polar Greece. Express. Oh. <laughs> polar Express? Yeah, cold North Pole. Cold. cold, yeah, it's cold. Is he? Like magnets. Magnets, polar opposites. That's what we're talking about when we are looking polar at polar mag, uh, molecule. These polar molecules, uh, it is written as H2O. What does this mean? How many hydrogens are there? Two. And how Two many marks. oxygens? Zero. Put your glasses on. So polar molecules are those that have areas or regions of positive and negative charge. Underline that, please. Polar molecules are those that have areas or regions of positive and negative charge. And I'm going to put a little plus sign over positive, and I'm going to put a little negative sign over uh, negative. A water molecule is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. We can see that right here. While there is no net charge to a water molecule, the two hydrogen atoms carry a slightly positive charge compared to the slightly negative charge of the oxygen. These atoms are held together by strong covalent bonds. Underline covalent, and I want you to put glue. Covalent is like glue sticking these molecules together. Remember, a molecule is made up of atoms. Okay, molecules made up of atoms. How much time do I have? Three minutes. Three minutes? All right, as a result of the water's polarity, the fact that it's got a negative and a positive side, when two water molecules get close together, the polar forces draw the molecules together like magnets. The hydrogen atoms with a plus charge of one water molecule will be attracted to the oxygen end of another water molecule. This attraction allows water molecules to form hydrogen bonds with each other. The hydrogen bonds are not as strong as covalent bonds, but they are strong enough to bind water molecules together and give water its unique characteristics, which we're going to start examining tomorrow. In comparison, covalent bonds are strong like glue, whereas hydrogen bonds are like magnets. And I want to show you a video about this, and then we will pick up with this tomorrow. So my video is this. Okay, pay attention and let's see if we do this. Okay, the guy was just, he's got a stream of water. Do you see it? Yeah. And now he's rubbing a balloon. What's he doing? Creating static electricity. Yeah, he's either adding more electrons or taking electricity.
electrons off of the balloon. <laughs> and can you see how it moves? I can become a waterbender. Okay. Yeah, exactly, like a real oh, life waterbender. Oh, I've seen somebody do that. I'm coming for you, Aang. So oh, this shows you, right, that water oh, has that kind of like yeah, magnetic, uh, charged kind of like quality. Are, All right, do me a favor and shut off that video, my dear. We are going to stop That's here.